agrees with me? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So go and ask for your money back. <laughs> That's actually the story of my life, right? I've studied five years um, a scientific degree and four years for a business degree. During this period, I learned a lot. I got a lot of content into my head. I know a lot of marketing. I know a lot of finance. I know a lot of statistics. I, lo I know a lot of chemistry. I know even how to break the, the roulette in a casino. You might be interested in knowing about that, right? But so that was part of the deal. I paid money to the universities. I get the content inside of my head. I go back home. So I thought that it might be fair also that I will find a company that will hire me based on that content that I have in my head. So I applied to get a work, in a, in a, to get a job in, that comp in those companies. So I was there with my resume, with, and I, all of a sudden I realized that they didn't want to talk about that. They want an interview. I said, it's not enough with the certification of the university. Why don't you ask me for an exam? No, no, we want an interview. So we went from one interview to another because they don't, need, they don't have enough with one. Uh, up to three, three different people. And, and then they asked me, um, do you have working experience? No, I was studying. <laughs> well, not even in summer. No, I was on holidays. <laughs> oh. So I was failing one company after another one. So no job for me. Since I decided to lie, so the next interview, I said, yes, I did work in summer. I did sell, I, I, I was selling ice creams for the whole summer. Oh, good. We like these guys that work in summer. So then they started to me, I opened the door for asking me weird questions like, how passionate are you about this job? Yes, I'm really passionate about selling ice creams. <laughs> right? How did you work with your peers? Um, yes, very good. We have a lot of them. I was alone in the store <laughs> selling ice creams. So I started to realize that they were asking for totally different things that I would have been taught at the university. No questions about curves of supply and demand, no questions about alchemy, no questions about physics, right? So are the companies crazy? No, they are not. What happens is that knowledge is a commodity for them. They are looking for the singularity of each individual. They are looking what, of what do you have special for, this, for them. So what is that makes you special? Right? Of course, they value the capacity of learning. That is very important for them. And that is what they have or they know when you come with a, with a degree on the university. But how do you teach? How do you test all the rest? You test all the rest in an interview, right? And what is that they check? They check what is called the 21st century skills or the soft skills, or the lifelong learning skills, right? And I think, I personally, I was really fortunate of being asked and being interviewed on those soft skills, because I had some friends that did not be so lucky. So what is this? 21st, uh, 21st century skills about. It's basically an, an array of abilities and competences that makes you different and that makes you collaborate and that makes you great for a company. And it's probably what separates you from a good employee to an exceptional employee for a company. And what I'm talking about, I'm talking about of being flexible, 
I'm talking about of learning to learn. I'm talking about of having an entrepreneurial attitude. I'm talking about um, being creative, being innovative, being having the ability to solve problems. And I'm talking about collaboration and teamwork. In my life, whether I wanted to get a job, keep a job, or get promoted, I extremely benefited from mastering these skills. So let me explain you some stories that I've seen during my career. That was last November in Dubai. I was sitting with my friend, Ernest. Just at that moment, he received a call from Meg Whitman, CEO of HP. And she told him, Ernest, I have an opportunity for you in San Francisco. He was recently moved from Barcelona to Dubai to run the operations in the uh, Middle East. Before of that, he was head of HP in San Cugat, and before he was having the different jobs in South America. So that was meaning to move the whole family, including four kids, from Dubai to San Francisco by the next week. Guess what he said? So thank you for the opportunity. I'm glad that you offered me that job. And HP, they value a lot the flexibility of Ernest and his employee, their employees. And they don't want to work with reluctant people on change. And they don't want to work with people that doesn't have the flexibility to change jobs and places. They don't like low maintenance employees, and they like self-motivated employees. So flexibility is not an option anymore. You have to have that on your checklist. And here's another story. This is about Pablo Rodriguez, Chief of Innovation and Research at Telefonica. He's a good, a good friend, good customer too. And probably he's the guy that knows more about technology in this city. So he has a great team across the world, in Israel, in London, South America, a great team of engineers and innovators working for him. And guess what? He only hires people that is self-motivated with the capacity of leading a team and capacity to run and lead new projects in the company. So he invented the Telefonica Challenge. And that is a competition to foster entrepreneurship and innovation within the company in order to maintain this spirit of entrepreneurship and to maintain this spirit of innovation. And this is a challenge where you as an engineer or you as a researcher, you, you get the opportunity to present your projects in front of the management team. And if you are able to convince them, you will be entitled to run your project for the company and so manage and drive the project that you design it in your head. And the engineers that are not able to convince the managers, they sit in a pool of engineers waiting, waiting to be recruited again. Right? You sit in the bench. I see this type of competition, this type of challenges flourishing among many, many different uh, companies. And this system of seating people in the benches, they are more and more common in every, com in every company. And this totally shifts our perspective in our professional career because we will be working on projects and around projects more than working around companies. So we will structure our professional lives around projects, not around companies anymore. So people without an entrepreneurial attitude will sit in the bench. So over the years, sorry. 
So employees want employers that are creative, that are being able to put new ideas into market. People that transform ideas into money. People that, or managers, are now embracing failure much more than I've saw for many years. People want people that solve problems for them. And that is the case of Paloma Perez. This is the marketing director of Carrefour for many years. So she decided to radically change the approach of uh, management in marketing for the company. So he took her team of marketing managers and forced them to work and leave one full day every month in the stores. And by putting his team working in the supermarkets, they start to solve real problems for the real people and changing and radically changing the typical marketing approach. So companies do not want people that sit behind Excel sheets on an office or studying pages and pages of marketing studies. They want people that go out in the field and talk to the customers. And managers, I see managers that are forced every single day to go and talk to customers and leave the comfort of their offices. So I see that companies are only the companies that succeed are the ones that are able to recruit A teams. And I see how companies are investing more and more on building the teams. I see how companies are struggling their minds on capturing the talent of the group, of the whole group. I see how companies only rely on people that, are, that have the competence of collaboration at the core of their actions. It's the same with the VCs and investors. VCs and investors are now only investing in teams, not in technologies or not in ideas anymore. They invest in teams. So that is the case of the companies. Companies only rely on people that master the ability of working together. So if you look at the assets of the leaders, the most valued asset of a leader is the ability to unlock the potential of a team. Right? It's the only way of leveraging the, the power of the company. So working and making your team work as really a team makes you increase your visibility within the company. It makes you a better reputation, and in return, you have a more chances to retain your job or be promoted. So people need to understand that teamwork is not an option anymore. It's an imperative. So why is that companies are including these soft skills more and more in the process of recruiting people. Why is that so important? Because it's not about good, good companies anymore. It's about teams. Only the companies that are able to articulate great teams are the only companies that will succeed. And everybody knows that. And you know what? The next generation of workers, basically our kids, they have this embedded in their bodies. They cannot understand life without sharing. They do sharing when they are playing online gaming. They do sharing when they are posting videos on YouTube. They are sharing when they post in Facebook and when they share their life in Twitter. Because they intuitively know that sharing will be and collaborating will be a great asset for them and for the companies. 
Do we need to master in communication? Yes, we do. Do we need to act behaviorally? Sorry, do we need to act ethically? Yes, of course. Do we, do we need more soft skills? Yes, you need a lot of them. So large companies used to hire, hire people based on their curriculum. Great companies used to hire top students from great universities based on the curriculum. And this is no longer like this. It's not enough to have a great curriculum because you will be asked to master these soft skills. If you are not able to work in teams, you won't have any chance to be recruited. So now let me tell you a story about the Singularity University think tank. This is a university that changed its curriculum every six months. This is a university created by Google and NASA and that they did a prediction. They said that in 10 years, there will be no um, people working in main manufacturer, manufacturing uh, facilities in the world. They will all be replaced by robots, as it's happening now already. So in 10 years, no major companies. So this similar will, pass, will happen with um, managerial and managers. So let me do, let me ask you if you ever thought in changing the world. I think that we are very, very fortunate for being asked to apply these soft skills and being evaluated for uh, these soft skills. I think because they are more human, because they are more like us, more individual, more respectful with the human nature. So, and some of them you may think that what I'm explaining is just particular cases, or this is not common, and that there are not such, such companies that they evaluate for that. Well, I think that this is a great opportunity for you to look and find those companies and only work for those companies that value these soft skills, because that will make better companies and in return, a better world. Thank you.